Hello class, this is the video for 3.3 and 3.4, two sections together um, to cover slope and the slope intercept form. And there are 18 problems in this section. So for number one, it says find the slope of the line passing through the pair of points or state that the slope is undefined. Then indicate whether the line through the points rises, falls, is horizontal, or is vertical. So the two points that they gave me are this, okay? Now I do have a formula on the formula sheet that talks about the slope, okay? So this is the slope formula. Um, and if you notice here, I know it's a little um, unfocused. There it goes. The formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what I've done to my points is I've labeled them with those labels. So this is the x coordinate of the first point y coordinate of the first point, x coordinate of the second point, and y coordinate of the second point. And then I wrote my formula down here and I just plot each number where it belongs over here. So y2 was negative two, my minus symbol, y1 was five. <coughs> Excuse me, x2 was a negative one, minus x1 was also a negative one. <coughs> Excuse me. So I end up with negative two minus five, which is negative seven, and negative one, and the double negatives turn to a plus one, which gives me zero. But negative seven over zero is undefined. So my m or my slope is undefined in this situation. And when you have an undefined slope, it means that the line is vertical. If your slope was a positive number and not undefined, then the line rises. If the slope was a negative number, then the line falls. And if the slope was zero, the number zero, then the line is horizontal. So I just wanted you to know this information in case you do this problem and you don't get undefined. If you get a positive, it rises, a negative, it falls, and zero, horizontal. Okay. So for number two, there it goes. Um, as people age, daily stress and worry decrease and happiness increases, according to the, an analysis of 340,847 adults. Um, ages 18 to 85 in a certain country. Um, later on, it does kind of expose what country that was, but we'll, we'll see it in a bit. Um, the graph shows a portion of the research. So here we have age and the percent reporting stress. And then here we have your age and the percent reporting stress. So it just gave us the data in two different forms. Um, I think this one's a little bit more accurate because you know exactly where this is tabling off to. And similarly here, you know exactly what number it's tabling off to. Apparently when they're 22, they're reporting 54% of stress, and when they're 62, they're reporting 22% of stress. So it says, find the slope of the line passing through the two points shown in the graph, express the slope as a decimal. So again, I grabbed those coordinates and I labeled them. I grabbed the other coordinate, I labeled it. I plugged everybody into the formula exactly where they belong, computed those values and ended up with negative 0 0.8. So for part B, it says, Use the answer from part A to complete the statement. For each year of aging, the percentage of Americans, so it gave away the country they were talking about, reporting a lot of stress decreases by 0 0.8. And it decreases because this is a negative. So that means it's decreasing by 0 0.8. Um, the rate of change is a negative 0.8% per year of aging, okay? So when they say rate of change, that means the slope. And the slope was negative 0 0.8. So for number three, it says write an equation for the line shown below. So I looked at this line and I grabbed this coordinate, which was two and five. And then I grabbed the coordinates for this point, which was zero and one. Then once I had those, I established that the y-intercept or the b, right, b is the y-intercept, 
So I established that the y-intercept was the value one. So I calculated my n. I did y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, and I ended up with, um, actually this is not supposed to be a six, that's supposed to be a five. So one minus five is negative four, zero minus two is negative two, that ratio is a positive two. So your equation is gonna be y equals mx plus b, Again, I'm using this formula here, y equals mx plus b. We'll talk about this notation later down the line. Um, so I need to find m, and I did already figure out what b is. So now I have m, and now I have b. The m that I found is 2, and the b that I found was 1. And since it says plus b, it's plus 1. Number 4 has the same exact directions, but different points. So the coordinates of this point are 0, 2. The coordinates of the second point are 7 and negative 2. So then for my b, that's the y-intercept, and that happens to be the value 2. My m, I actually need to calculate. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so that's here. I calculated the numerator, the denominator. This could not reduce. So the m stays as negative 4 over 7 x plus, and the b value is 2. Okay, so for number 5, it says that the slope of the line that goes through the given points, find the slope of the line that goes through the given points. So since they already gave me the points, I'm just going to do the second y value. So second y value minus the first y value, second x minus the first x, that gave me negative two over one, which is just negative two. And so this is the slope between those two points. For number six, same thing. So we've got y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Um, this becomes negative two minus six. This double negative becomes zero plus two. So I get negative eight over two, which results in negative four. Now number seven says find the slope of the line on the graph. So again, I have to find the coordinates of this. So one and two were the coordinates for one of the points and negative one and negative three were the coordinates of the other point. So I did y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I ended up with negative 5 over negative 2, which only simplifies in sign to 5 over 2. Same directions here. So this coordinate was 0, 7, and this coordinate was 5 and negative 1. So I did y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. End up with negative eight over five, which did not simplify at all. Same thing here, I needed two points. So I took this point here and this point here. So I took zero and actually it should be zero and negative two, and then one and negative two. So you end up with negative two minus two, which is negative two plus two, which gives me zero. And then at the bottom, x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0 is just 1. And the 0 over 1 is 0. So the slope here is 0. Number 10 says find the slope and y-intercept of the line. So instead of writing minus 1, I wrote it as plus a negative because we know that the formula is y equals mx plus b. Okay? So once I have it in this form, m is whatever's in front of x, which happens to be eight, and b is whatever's after that plus sign, which in this case happens to be negative one. For number 11, it's the same thing. Now notice here, there are no x's. So I wrote y equals zero x's plus four. So the slope here is zero and the y-intercept here is four. And now number 12 says begin by solving the linear equation for y. This will put the equation in slope-intercept form. 
then find the slope and the y-intercept using the new slope-intercept form equation. So I'm taking this and I'm getting the y by itself. So the first thing I need to do is get the term that does not have a y over to the other side. So I minus 6x to the other side. So that gave me negative 6x and this is a positive 30. Now you always want to have the x's in the front because remember what your goal is. Your goal is to get it to look like this. So you definitely want to have your x's in the front and your constants in the back. So once I had this, I had to isolate y. So I divided everybody by negative five. That gave me y by itself. Here, these simplified by sine and positive 30 divided by negative five was a negative six. So then in this case, m is six over five and the b is that negative six. Remember, you can rewrite this again if you need to as six over five x plus a negative six. Those two symbols multiplied together would give you that minus. But I'm kind of going backwards so that I could identify B. Now, number 13 is graph the line using the slope and intercept. So here the slope is M and the Y intercept is six. Now remember, they call this guy B. And the reason why they call it B is because that's where you begin your graph. And then from there, you're going to move according to the M, okay? Now you always wanna write your M in the form of a fraction because your M represents rise over run, okay? Um, so when I write three as a fraction, I get three over one. And since it's a positive three, it will rise. And then because it's a positive one, it will run forward, okay? Um, so we have three up and one over. So I will start by plotting my y-intercept of zero, six. This point here, which I've labeled the coordinates. But then from there, I'm going to go up one, two, three, and then over one unit. And so I end up with this second point. And the coordinates of that second point would be one and nine. And so that's this coordinates here. So when I graph this in the computer, I wanna plot that y-intercept and then go up three and over one to get the second point. So for number, all the rest of the problems, it's the same thing. So they want me to graph this given the equation. So my slope is negative four, my b is positive two. So my slope, I can write it as negative four over one, but the negative means it's gonna go down four. But the one at the bottom is positive, so it's going to go to the right one. So I start at my y-intercept of two, and then from there, I go down four and over one. And so the two points that I would plot in the computer to get this line is this point, which the coordinates are zero, two, and this point, which the coordinates are one and negative two. For number 15, it's the same thing, but m happens to already be in a fraction. This is positive, so we'll go up two. This is positive, so we'll run to the right three. B in this case, though, is a negative three. So that means I will start with a negative three y-intercept, and then from there, go up two and over one, two, three. And so the points here are this point, which is zero and negative three, and this point, which is three and negative one. Number 16. Um, my slope here is negative one half, though negative should always go with the numerator. So it means I will be going down one, but then the two is positive, so I'll be going to the right two. The y-intercept here is positive three. So I'm gonna go to positive three, plot my y-intercept, and then from there, I'm gonna go down one and over two units. So the coordinates of this point are zero, three, and the coordinates of this point are two, two. <clears throat> now for number 17, we have this equation. And the first part of this problem says, put the equation in slope-intercept form by solving for y. So we're going to minus 4x on both sides. We get this positive y by itself. Write the x's first and then the constant. So that's a positive 3, so we put plus 3. Then it says identify the slope. The slope is whatever's in front of x, so negative 4. Identify the y-intercept, that's what's behind the plus sign, which is positive three, and then it wants us to graph this. So we have to begin at the y-intercept, which was positive three, 
And if my slope is negative four, you write that as a fraction over one, negative will mean you go down four, and positive one at the bottom means you go to the right one. So I will go down one, two, three, four, and to the right one. So the two coordinates that you wanna plot in the computer are zero, three, and then one and negative one. And I do believe we are in the last um, problem here for this section. So for number 18, it says the graph below shows the percentage of nationalities A and B in a certain country X years after 2003. And then part A says use the two points for nationality B to find an equation in the form Y equals MX plus B that models the percentage of nationality B, Y in the country X years after 2003 round into two decimal places. So the first thing I did is I looked at nationality B and I said, oh wow, look, they have a y-intercept. So the value here is 14. So my y-intercept or my B value is 14. Now the slope, I get it from here. So I'm using these two points here. So y2 is 20 minus y1, which is 14, x2, which is 47 minus zero, which is zero. So after I do this computation, I end up with this fraction, which in the calculator um, rounds to 0 0.13. So there's my M, X plus B, and that's the equation. Now for part two, it says use this model from part A to project the percentage of nationality B in the country in 2103. So 2103 is 100 years after 2003, which means my X is going to be 100 because X is how many years after 2003. So then I plugged in 100 for X. So 0 .0, 0 0.13 times 100 is 13 plus 14 gave me 27. So it's going to be 27% are going to have nationality B in the country. And that is the end of this section. And that is the end of the entire first unit. So the next video that we will be recording is going to be the test one review. Now, there are a lot of repetitive problems and a lot of cases where you could have one of four possibilities. So in the review to make sure that we include each scenario, um, there are gobs and gobs of problems on that first review. So what I've noticed is that in my math labs is they split the review into two parts. So the first part has um, 28 questions on it. And then the second part has almost the same. I want to say like 24 or 26 problems. Yeah, the second part has 26 problems. So I will put those in two different videos. Um, so you will have those and they will be a little bit more lengthy than these lecture videos just because um, there's more problems in those sections than in these individual sections. Um, but other than that, I will see you in the next video.